Hello folks, welcome to my YouTube channel, Watercolor Impressions. Since it's winter season, I've been doing a series of winter paintings. I thought I will do another downtown Toronto winter painting. Before we get on to it, hit that subscribe button so you guys can get weekly video updates from our channel. And uh, let's get started guys. I didn't provide the drawing template for this painting tutorial because um, I want to show you guys how do I approach my drawing uh, before I paint. Um, years ago, when I started like drawing, um, I usually look for a vanishing point and I look put perspective lines. Then I draw from there. Um, but years passed by, I can also found that um, there's free form of drawing. Uh, when I draw, I want to like explore my creative side. I don't want to restrict to lines or anything like that. So the way I usually approach drawing nowadays is look for shapes and I connect shapes. Um, when I put one shape, I'll see how it's uh, compared with other shapes. Being said that, you'll gain more confidence when you uh, draw this way and sometimes uh, the more you do it, the more comfortable you get, the more good you get it as well. Let's start with the cloud. Uh, for the cloud, I'm using um, a dirt in my palette. Uh, what I mean by that is um, whatever I left in my palette, I'm just using it uh, because uh, whatever color you mix, it becomes gray. So I'm just throwing it there. So whenever um, you start with watercolors, um, there is a tendency of telling people that uh, you start with a light wash, then you build up the pigment. Um, sometimes I try to um, use different approach as well. As you can see, I started with the background and as soon as I took the grab uh, background and I connected to the foreground. Uh, for the foreground, I introduced a lot of darker values. Now I jumped onto the background building. So whenever you do buildings um, or any kind of like architecture buildings, um, if it's in the background, um, I try to uh, treat as a single flat shape. There is uh, thousands of balconies and thousands of uh, windows happening there. Uh, the trick is to simplify. Uh, if you don't simplify, uh, you'll caught up in details. Uh, when you see this painting from far, um, it doesn't matter. The thing that matters is what's your focal point and where you want the viewers to look at it. So my focus point is the midground building and the cars which is in the foreground. So uh, I started the flat shape at the background, but as it will come down, I'm going to a little bit of gradient at the bottom. So that gives the illusion of light as well as a little bit of gradient in my thing. So I jumped onto the midground building. This is my focal point there. I'm going to be spending a lot of details there. Um, the f for the wash, I did a uh, amber and a little bit of neutral tint at the bottom. And before it dries out, I'm throwing neutral tint and I'm adding windows here and there. Um, and I'm trying to take off a little bit of paint here and there. Then I connected that uh, mid-ground building to the foreground building. And I also noticed that um, there's going to be a tree which connects the, um, the foreground building and the mid-ground building. So I'm taking tissue paper and taking off the paint from uh, there as well. So now uh, let's focus on the foreground building. Um, I'm also want this foreground building to come in the front. So I'm going to be introducing a lot of dark pigments there. Um, I also put like a cadmium yellow in the middle because there's also a light happening there in the reference. So I'm just going to add that light as well because it give a warm color in our painting as well. Even though in the reference there's a lot of things happening in the foreground building, but as I said, treat it as a single shape. So for the foreground building, I'm using cadmium orange, neutral tint, and a little bit of neutral tint in it. So I'm also taking uh, clean water in my brush and I'm splattering some water in the foreground building to get some uh, texture in there and I also took off some of the paint to make awnings and whatever details I can put later and I also left some uh, white bits for my figures in the foreground the background uh, uh, when it comes to the foreground I kept it as really weak as possible and you can see I add a little bit of details in the foreground the midground and I also add the cars as well so now uh, let's jump on to the trees uh, I'm so there's like three or four trees there, but I'm going to reduce to uh, three trees and I'm trying to add the directional lines for the wires uh, for the telepoles. Um, for whenever I do trees, I try to make it impressionistic as possible and simple as possible. I'm introducing a little bit of darker values through my neutral tint which was left over in my brush. This painting is all about the snow because it looks really messy now. As soon as we put the snow with white paint, the old painting comes alive. Even though I spread this 
painting pretty fast because I've shown the same technique several times in my previous winter paintings. You can also refer this winter painting tutorials which is on the side of the screen or also you can uh, go and check out my playlist for winter series. So um, when it comes to adding snow, uh, make sure you look for reference and squint your eyes and it will tell you where to put the details exactly. And I'm also using this pinstripe brush so that it gives a really crisp lines for my um, snow. And I'm also adding that uh, using for the telephone poles and even for the details which is in the foreground and or even for the trees as well. I'll keep building the eyelets and the snow till I'm happy with it. So now I change the brush to a small brush because I want to get a little bit of um, detailing work need to be done for the cars as well as um, for the headlights for the car as well. You can see I left the white bit for the car because I want all the attention to go there because there's a contrast happening between uh, the mid-ground building and the cars. And I also added the details in the foreground as well and I also keeping it like minimal as possible as well. The, um, I'll be spending more details uh, for the mid-ground building and which is connecting to the mid-ground. The small brush helped me to add some details at the top of the building. Um, you can see I'm spending more time on the mid-ground building because that's our focal point um, as far as I'm concerned. Now I'm adding some details for the, the people which is the foreground and some details in the foreground as well. So there's a cycle which is attached to a cycle pole so I'm also adding some details as well because I don't want to as a, I want to like have a lost and found edges. And the foreground building is also have some deposits at the top of the building, so I did that as well. So take my reference, now it's your turn to come up with an impression or a painting and uh, and share it with me guys and I'd like to see what you can come up with. Thanks again for watching this uh, winter painting video tutorial with me. If you have any questions regarding this painting, comment below or write me at watercolorimpressions at gmail.com. And please do tell me what's your favorite color in this painting. If you're an artist or individual who enjoys winter painting tutorials, uh, check out my winter series painting playlist. Before you go, hit the subscribe button so you guys can get weekly video updates from our channel. And please do share with your friends and family. And uh, good luck with your painting, folks.